I had the chance to talk to you about first topic. Hopefully, it won't be controversial, or maybe too controversial at least. Uh, but I'm really curious what will be your feeling after that. So feel free to reach out to me after the talk or at the end of a networking session and share your opinions. I w I'm very curious about it. So, design-driven business and technology. So, let's start from a quote. Logic will get you from A to B, imagination will take you everywhere. So, this short quote reflects what, uh, a part at least of a message that I want to uh, deliver to you today. And these two sentences reflect two types of journey. One is very straightforward, simple, it has like very clear definition of starting and end points. And the other brings opinions, choices, options, it's non-linear approach for sure. So on one hand we have the logic, on the other hand we have the imagination. And when I think about this, it reminds me of a human brain. So the human brain is actually divided in two major parts. One, the left hemisphere is responsible for organization of our right side of the body and also is considered to be more, let's say, academic and logical. And on the other hand, the right side, so the right hemisphere is responsible to organize our left side of the body. And this part, this part of the brain is responsible for anything related to creativity and emotions, so everything that is abstractive, let's say. And there is an order in that, and it applies to every human being. That's the fact. So because of this division of roles, we can do our daily tasks, daily, daily jobs, smaller things, but also we can take a bigger challenges. We can reach out for advanced topics, actually. And when we picture the setup, it looks more like this. So, during my preparation for our meeting today, I stopped for a moment and think how magnificent is our human brain. And this reflected me one thought, like I realized an interesting fact actually. So, these two separate self-efficient yet very specialized parts actually are working together somehow. They are totally different, but still are in our head and working together. And this resembles of something, something that I'm seeing as a design manager of a company, which is building and providing digital solutions on a daily basis, actually. And we have this. Two separate domains are cooperating with each other. Two domains that are totally different. So one is very, again, logical, straightforward, focus on here and now, and the other one is abstractive. It's non-linear, it provides different questions, different possibilities, different ways, and it deals with emotions, it deals, <coughs> deals with creativity, needs and pain points. And on one side we have the technology, on the other side we have digital design, yin and yang of digital business, if you like. And that thought really resonated with me. So now because those domains are so different yet so close, one might ask a question. How to make technology and digital design work in an efficient way together? How to make it work? It's hard to tell. And these are like legitimate questions, really. Uh, and I figured out that I might have the answer, but I will keep you a bit longer without the answer, so please bear with me. So before we move forward, uh, there is one thing that I need to be very clear about. And to take the next step into this journey, we need to be on the same page when it comes to understand what digital, digital design actually is. Um, for that, I will reach out to the Gartner's materials. And in a report from 2017, 
Gartner, uh, Gartner actually stated uh, that digital design is a process of solution creation. It is also known as user experience design or people-centric design. Many organizations mistakenly conflate UX with user interface. Thank you for the talk that I had previously. Where are you? All right, I don't see. Yeah, here. Thank you for because th this guy, this guy mentioned actually the same thing, that UX and UI is totally different, and that's true. The two are quite different. So UI deals with visual representation. This is actually the, the words of Gartner, while UX deals with purpose. So you can see that digital design is not actually about beautiful pictures. This is not user interface thing. And as such, it requires a structured approach to identify, understand, and at the end to address this purpose that Gartner actually mentioned. So what I want you to take out from this point is one thought that design equals a process, and it relates to the purpose, needs, and pain points. Having that in mind, we can get back to my original question. So one is how to make sure that technology and digital design can actually work together efficiently. And the second question is what it means to have a design-driven business and technology. So please look on those two examples. Karl-Heinz Brandenburg, a German engineer and mathematician, is perceived as MP3 uh, inventor. So Brandenburg's involvement started around 80s, uh, and he was involved in dealing with di digital music compression. And he was a doctoral in German university, as far as I remember. So his professor actually urged him to work on the problem of how to transmit music over digital ESDN phone line. That was his topic. And that, was just, that wasn't actually just a simple mathematician task. Uh, so Karl Heinz had to immerse himself into how people perceive the music. So he needed to reach out and dig deeper, not only in the mathematical field, but also how really our ears work. And first version of his algorithm wasn't very successful, unfortunately. And this happens actually with every new technology uh, today. But after a lot of development and a lot of failures, they managed with his team to, to do a breakthrough. And that wasn't the end of the work. They pushed many improved versions to the market before MP3 technology got attraction. That took them quite a few years. So MP3 began to have attraction around 1990. That was the year when college computer geeks actually with new PCs, they started to create their own musical files. Not only like existing musical files from ripping the CDs, but also their own actual real uh, songs. And in 1993, MPEG uh, group decided about several formats that will be a standard on the market in terms of also audio. And actually, MP MP3 was one of them. And at this point uh, in time, people also realized that MP3 can give more, actually. It helped to share the files, reduce the storage space, that was actually very pricey at that time. So I don't know if you remember one gigabyte hard drives, but that was the time, actually. Uh, and it helped to improve their life and helped to save the internet bandwidth. And moving fast forward to 1997, in 1997, people actually are exchanging MP3 files through internet. It took, as I mentioned, al almost a decade MP3 technology to get to the mainstream. And at that time, MP3 players were, were big and clunky, or small and useless. And they were also seen as substitutes for Sony's Walkmans or CDs. That was the reality at that time. And let's move a couple of years forward to 2001. So the year of premiere of the first version of iPod. 
on 23rd of October, Apple revealed uh, an entire system of discover, storage, organizing, and listening to the music with iPod, with iTunes application, and iTunes Store. What they did actually, they redefined the market of music. And how they did that? They looked what's happening on the market. They looked what's happening with the loseless compression uh, algorithm and also MP3. They looked what was the pain that people were dealing with actually. And they managed to change the shift, like make a shift in the market. And this was a big business success. So as you can see, there are two perspectives. One from the technology point of view, and the second one where design was heavily involved. And almost 18 years later, it happens that MP3 is still with us and is in a good shape. So when I look at similar examples like this one, it is clear that to innovate, there are at least two strategies. One, from the tech point of view, to innovate, you need to push new technology to the market and incrementally improve it. And this is what happened actually with the Brandenburg's invention. And from the design, digital design perspective, to innovate, you need to focus on the meaning. You need to be real about what is essential for people, which needs are not addressed, not fulfilled, or purely addressed, actually. You should focus on something that will be like this purpose that Garten mentioned, actually, and pain points and deliver a relief. So in this way, for me, a technology is a great and awesome tool that is getting better and better with each iteration. Digital design, on the other hand, comes as a knowledge and structure provider. So a source of big picture, the context, plan, and additional information, additional data that you can use with technology, actually, to build digital solutions. And by using those tools, we can build solutions that at least we have the chance to last on the market. And they will have the meaning for people because you will understand what they want and what is hurting them. As a result, uh, those products for sure will provide revenue. And this is what business is about, actually, at the end. So one more time, I will reach out to Gartner's knowledge and experience. Some of you might know this graph. Uh, it is a technology hype cycle graph. It reflects what happens with each new technology. So Gartner puts a technology on a timeline, and this orange line shows how major this technology is, actually. So when technology emerges until emerges, usually it's very clunky, it's hard to use, uh, and it's very hard to use actually by anyone uh, else than a few selected ones, let's say. No one knows how to productize it um, and where this technology can be actually applied. So with each iteration, the technology gets better and better. It gains more capabilities, old obstacles disappear. When it gets mature enough, it reveals and receives more attention and hype on the market. And we can see that with each new technology. For example, that's my opinion. Sorry for that who don't agree with me, but that's happened with blockchain, in my opinion. Uh, it's getting hype, but no one knows how to use it properly yet. But if you don't know how to use the technology, you can actually just hurt yourself uh, or your business, and that's a pain. What people are actually lacking at this time is this understanding the meaning, uh, the pain point, how this technology can be applied to solve real problems. And when someone figures out how to do it, and what's the need, and what's the pain, uh, then you can take this awesome technology, apply to it, and beautiful things actually start to happen. So. You can start building tables, houses, and shortly even you can reach out for entire cities. That's 
what's happening with major technologies and using, in my opinion, also design. Uh, and when we look on this, there is a specific time frame when the technology seems to be, in my opinion, more efficient uh, on the front seat, actually. During this time, technology-driven approach can be observed, and e usually it lasts until reaching some kind of a tipping point when something else takes the lead. And there are many factors that can be a game changer here. And for sure, one of them is identification of a problem and pain point, uh, or addressing or understanding what's the purpose for technology. And when you do it, I think this is the, the moment when design-driven approach should be applied and take the wheel. A next step, a next step actually in the evolution of this technology to make it better uh, and to make it work on the market. And also the, the way how the market sees this technology evolving at the time. So this is not a shiny new geeky thing, but this is actually a real solution that can be applied. People can benefit from it and businesses can have a revenue at the end. So, in my opinion, you don't need to choose between technology and digital design. Those two worlds work perfectly, perfectly awesome together in a cooperation. Uh, and that concludes the first question. How to make technology and digital design work together in an efficient way? In my opinion, cooperate and adjust your work according to the stage on the uh, technology hype cycle? That's my answer to this question. So let's move to the next question. What it means actually to have a dr design driven business and technology? And to answer to it, I will provide you some examples. First come from, comes from Barclays. And this is a major global financial service provider engaged with personal banking, credit cards, and more. And this company actually has a strong track record in innovation. For example, they created the first ATM and provided and introduced the first credit card in the UK. In 2012, Barclays uh, has set up a design function to work across entire group. And they were very clear about the goal be the most design-focused and technology cutting-edge bank in the UK. That was the, the goal, actually. Very clear, but very strong statement. And as a result of the strategy, they started to monitor with NPS score for many endpoints. One of them was a mobile application uh, on the Windows mobile phone. And because of this new approach and the changes in projects into approach in strategies, uh, in 2013, this application scored plus 65, uh, 62 NPS score, and that was a huge win for them. I don't know if you know how, uh, how the scale of NPS looks like. It's from minus 100 to plus 100, and they scored 65, uh, 62. That was an awesome value. Uh, another one, so and the next example from Barclays is Pingit. And it was launched in February 2012. And this is a mobile payment service that allows customers to send and receive money through a mobile phone number. Previously, they were using actually a waterfall approach. So you, you know perfectly what, what, what it means. Uh, with the recent changes in the company and also having a new chief design officer, they decided to work <coughs> differently in this specific project. Uh, they decided to use a startup approach and sat together with the entire team. And the result uh, of that was that they had more conversation, that had more chance to work together and understand what they are building, for whom they are building, and why they are building something. And this happens to be also a common pattern when using design-driven approach to bring collaboration to the team 
uh, that helps to share and transfer the knowledge across entire product team and the organization. And this uh, more collaborative approach actually managed to get 20 awards uh, from the innovation perspective. That was a huge win for them also. So another example comes from Dolux, an internationally available brand of architectural paint. Uh, Dolux had a mobile application that was providing a catalog of paints, uh, different colors and different types of paints. Unfortunately, uh, this product didn't meet the expectation from Dolux and the business decision, decision was to do something about it and actually to use a design-driven approach. What Dolux did, they hired an external UX agency that took the, the task, but they stated also a uh, few goals and one of them was that uh, they want to increase sales of testers and pain through the application and in-store. So what the UX agency did is first they conducted a user research that allowed them to uncover what actually people wanted to have and use, what were they actually problems. Secondary, they proposed to do a design set of design principles that collected and shared this knowledge in a very digestible form through the team. And next, they designed the app, designed the interface, did a visual design uh, with applying the insights from the research and from these principles that they created. And during the development, also, they did a tons of user testing to make sure that they are shipping the right product and they are addressing the problems that they revealed. All of those, uh, all, all of those things reflect how design-driven approach works in reality. And the final result was actually outstanding. So 65% increase in tester paint sales, and sorry for that, and 20 million downloads of the application uh, across more than 60 markets worldwide. That was a huge ex success. The last example comes again from United Kingdom, and it's like Barbary, and also, uh, by the way, Aston Martin are widely regarded as two of most valuable brands in the world and are regularly featured in rankings of top brands, actually. Both have placed design lead leaders as company directors to ensure that the management has at least the chance to listen about problems of users, the perspective, the design perspective, and what happens at the end when people are trying to use their products. And having a design voice in the C-suite table is also one of the observations that applies to companies' design ma ma maturity. And InVision today will be covering this part also about how mature different companies can be and what's the scale. So you will get the chance to listen to that in a moment. So here comes my last takeaway. When considering design-driven approach in your project or business, be advised that it requires to looking from the business perspective and from the user perspective. There is no other chance to do it properly. Both spectrums are equally important and should be taken into account whenever you do a decision inside the team. Whether it's small, whether it's big, look at this options that you have from the business perspective and from the design perspective. And then, only then, when you will be aware of what are different cases, what are different aspects, then you can decide that either you will go for one of them, because business matters more, for example, but at least this will be a wise de decision, not blindly de blind decision. So you might wonder how can, you, uh, can your company harness the value of design? So first, change the mindset inside your organization. Start from educating your team that design is more than pretty pictures and it, it equals a process. This is what you need to do, actually. 
and everything that comes with this process. Make sure that everyone feels obligated to ask questions why we are doing that, for whom we are doing that, what problem we are solving, and of course everyone should feel responsible to get the answers to those questions. Uh, and use the knowledge um, during daily decisions. They need to be obligated to that. Another one is technology and digital design uh, works better together actually and they are complementary to each other. So you don't need, really, you don't need to choose. Just adjust your approach uh, according to state on a technology hype cycle. Take the chance and test it. See whether my idea works if you have the chance. And third, focus on both business and user uh, spectrums. Do not forget about any of them. And make sure that you are collecting on both spectrums the knowledge, the data, and you are actually using these things for your decisions. So to wrap up, let me get back into the initial quote. Logic will get you from A to B. Uh, imagination will take you everywhere and design will give you meaning to your journey. And I want you to leave you with this thought. Thank you. <laughs>